Denmark is a small country with a lot to offer. Ranking among the most competitive, innovative, and sustainable countries in the world, Denmark is built on trust and transparency. Invest in Denmark is Denmark's national investment promotion agency under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We are a free one-stop consultation service. We provide confidential and tailor-made solutions for foreign companies looking to set up or expand a business in Denmark. From our first contact to the fully executed venture, our advisors can assist you with contact to potential partners, research communities, business clusters, universities, industry organizations, and local authorities. We also provide advice on general and sector-specific framework conditions and unfold business opportunities. We facilitate customized fact-finding visits and aftercare programs. Every industry has its own opportunities and challenges. It takes expert market knowledge and a strong network to pinpoint the right entry points. Whether your business operates within tech, clean tech, life science, food, maritime, or the design and innovation sectors, our advisors use their in-depth, industry-specific experience to identify your path into the Danish market. Trust in us. Invest in trust. Invest in in Denmark. Thank you very much for having me here. It's been a pleasure working with NASCOM and Invest in Denmark uh, making this report. I've been uh, seeing these globes. It's been on the opening slide when we have had the meetings uh, on this report. Uh, at one of the later meetings here, one a person, uh, Gautam Mohan, said, couldn't we make the globes a little larger so we could actually see Denmark? <laughs> because it has been on our mind, how, how can we actually articulate how the huge and uh, famous and impressive IT organizations of India should pay attention to this small country in the middle of Europe? That has been our, on our minds over the last half year here. So my background for, for staying here with you is uh, quite some years uh, with uh, companies who may be known to you on the supplier side, on the advisor side. It's been a pleasure on having focused what is perhaps most relevant to all of us, clients. I've been camping uh, in all four countries, so if I may have a focus on Denmark today, I definitely have focus and love with all four Nordic countries. We are a family in the, in the Nordics, definitely. But the country has also developed very, very much over the last uh, 20, 25 years, and the markets are very much different today. And the reasons for, uh, why you should invest here, there, in which companies are also developing over years. Perhaps we cannot get into every details of it today, but there are differences. It's also been a pleasure for me to guide some of you, uh, perhaps present here today, but others not present, but try to guide suppliers to, into the market, making their best efforts, because it's all in our common interest to perform best possible in serving the client, serving the Nordic societies. Uh, today I'm also uh, involved in the local uh, industry organizations, and I'm helping up with uh, st startup communities where I am working as a judge. So that's enough about me. Uh, my name is Paul Tockersdale. So here you have the Nordic countries, for those who haven't seen it yet. And here you can actually see Denmark, right? Not a lot about Iceland. It's certainly a, a, a proud Nordic country, but we have left them a little out of the report for now. But the four major countries are here. Here you can see the distribution. Yes, uh, Sweden has the largest uh, uh, GDP. Norway, the oil people, have the, the second largest. But if you see the IT spend, it, it swaps around. You don't need that much IT to drill oil. Right? Full respect for that, very interesting. One of my old clients, uh, the oil business. Uh, however, uh, the, the, the IT spend is, is different when you spread it over countries. The companies, a, a number of huge clients. 
There's 50 over uh, above 10 billion dollars, 250 about 1 billion. So even though the market has changed, there's still possibilities to make major deals in the Nordics in case you should be very interested in that. However, the market is changing. You know, years back when I was working with major deals, the clip level were $300 million deals. Otherwise, why shouldn't I care? It's not that anymore. 80% of all deals are below $20 million. That means a lot to when you are sitting on the business development side, on your side. What are we looking for? We are looking for how to engage with clients on interesting deals, right? On deals that can move you forward to the next deal, to the next client, to make something that is relevant for, relevant for you in Denmark, in the Nordics, leading towards Europe or wherever. The worst thing you can do is to find something which is not relevant. It's completely different than 10 years ago. Population density. Yeah, I had a small smile from, from Shankar when I mentioned uh, uh, population density uh, compared to India, but there's difference in the Nordics as well. <laughs> Please remark that Denmark is a very small country where we have you know, six million people. So everything is closed in Denmark. As seen from my daily life, I, I can you know, reach you know, four or five clients in a day if I'm a little speedy. One of them in Sweden, right? We have a bridge to Sweden. So it's normal that if you have an office in Denmark, you just drive over to IKEA and some of the other main clients in Sweden. There's no borders here in Nordics. We work as friends. So I just cover south, southern Sweden. I can drive up to Volvo and so on and so forth. That's normal. Nordics is, is a very free market. Without going into the details of it, uh, it's worthwhile thinking, it's worthwhile discussing in between us, where do you put your main office? But it, independent of where you place it, you can move freely around. Other parameters are definitely cultures. Even though you may think from outside, well, this looks all the same, they all speak English. Yeah, okay, I can tell you there's lots to do with cultures. It's lots to do with the language, local language, because we can interchange language, local languages, but then again, not. But what makes Denmark exceptional is the diversity of sectors, which are referable by on the European level or even fully global level. We can touch upon one of the sectors which was mentioned previously, the energy and clean tech sector. There's no country in the world which are spearheading this on a green agenda led by the private companies and backed up by the government like the Danish is one at the moment. We are talking about the wind turbine company of the world. We are talking about uh, the energy company of the world, which will build now energy islands that's never been seen before. We are talking about power to X, not seen before, out of this small country which cannot be seen on a map. Right? We are talking about a finance sector. It says Copenhagen FinTech here, but it is actually Nordic FinTech. We discussed it here over morning coffee that there's so much energy here that Denmark has a financial cent center, which is of course not at the same dimension as we see it in, in, in London. But apart from that, we are now saying London, Berlin, Copenhagen, right? So the worst while focusing in here. When we see CPG as well, we are talking about robotics. We are talking about the population, enormous amounts of data to explore from, right? <clears throat> uh, we're talking about um, a retail sector which has been competitive for decades and thereby also setting standards for what retail can do in an European, European context. Now over to life science. Denmark life science is a hop. And why is it? What is life science about? Life science is about data. I'll come back to it, why, why it has become so. But Denmark is the hop for data due to the public generation of data together with finance sector for over 50 years, which means that it's not just Danish pharma businesses who are located in Denmark, it's all the European or global pharma sectors who's coming to, data, to Denmark because we have the data. What else should they be doing here in Denmark? 
They're coming there because we have the data which they need for their cancer search and so on and so forth. So if we talk about life science and the four, five, six, seven major Danish companies, we're talking about 450 companies in Denmark of medium size, plus the internationals forming this sector in little Denmark. And now we have some of the big ones as well when we come to logistics. Perhaps some of you have known about a company called Mask. We also have the same on land transport, huge size. Who are into, yeah, they were the first to read. I thought that blockchain was something to do with finance and something cl close to illegal. When, when Mask launched their huge blockchain project for controlling a whole business outside their own business. You know, this is really leading. Now we also see that other international logistics companies are placing their business in Denmark to follow that sector. Perhaps it's not my words convincing you, but I think the report is about to document that in Denmark we have leading sector, which means that when you get deals in Denmark, which I hope you will, <laughs> you will have deals which are referable to the rest of the Nordics and to the rest of Europe. These are some of the four elements. I've already touched upon them. Green transformation is leading IT. We see that there's IT in green transformation, around 20%, 15, 20% of IT in all green transformation. And the other way around, all these deals advised today, we see something like 15% of all IT deals being green. Right? So there's so much in it. So when the ambassador says, that Denmark is the green country of, of today, which it is, <laughs> be it by the ambition set by the private organization and supported by the government, and there's an Indian-Danish partnership. This is a huge machine generating IT business with you. Digitalization, no further comments. ESG, all the documentation work that follows with it, that's not the same as green transformation. It's a whole documentation burden and opportunity on the site for IT business. I'll come on a little back to it. AI, big data, cloud, uh, quantum computing, and so on and so forth. These are areas where Denmark is both in the lead of the technology, kind of the, what should I say, the university parts of it, knowledge-wise, but most importantly, the industries, the companies are in the lead of the utilization of it, which is perhaps the main message of the report. Denmark is the utilization country. Some of these companies will be known to you. Can't resist a mentioning, for example, Lego has just invested a billion dollars in Metaverse. Right? Where will that go? <laughs> but there's companies in every sector of this size and below. Just a little bit flip back in history, because it means something to what, what, what Denmark is today. Data Centralen, which is all public IT in, of governmental character, was centralized in 1959. That's a long time ago. The same happened for all uh, regional and municipality data in 1972. Both those conglomerate it was outsourced later to private companies, DXC, and today later to in, uh, institutional uh, investors for the municipality part, and now with NEC. This has meant a tremendous maturity when it comes to data and public and finance sector, which means that Denmark has been very, very early in creating a fully paperless society between finance sector, public sector, and the population like me. <laughs> so what they are discussing over in US at the moment, could we have something to do where we exchange document instead of what we're blah, blah, blah. That is something that we have just celebrated a 30 years anniversary of in Denmark now, something called e-box. Right? So this has fueled something. And what does that mean to you? This means that when you go in and create a deal in Denmark where you need data for whatever source, you will see data availability within the companies and in the borderline of, of a public sector that you will not see anywhere else. I know it sounds a little brave, but I think it's true. 
This means that you can work with the most model technology, the most advanced business cases, which you can refer anywhere else as we've done it here, look what we can do as a supplier. This is what's important. Referring back to what's important today, get the right deals, not necessarily just a deal. The Indian community has been in Denmark for a long time. It's been a huge impact on the Danish community, learning-wise, experience-wise, and so on and so forth. And it's, I can happily report, because I've interviewed many clients up to this report, saying that the Indian companies are very well integrated. They are highly appreciated. We see it in a client set where the Indian companies are steadily on top. So for those of you who are not yet, yet there yet, what should you then be there for? Yeah, perhaps because you have a solution that just fits in. It's a safe harbor to enter and a safe environment to develop in further if you have something to add further. So ha what happens with the IT development, the IT economy in Denmark? A little to my surprise, it didn't slow down during the pandemic. No. <laughs> Of course, some was, something was closed down in all the fun part with the restaurants and the theaters and everything that I should do in my spare time, that was closed down. But all the rest was kept open. A lot to my surprise, the investments did not slow down. Almost all uh, companies that I interviewed could report that they have scaled up and moved forward their, their IT investments to solve supply chain challenges, product development, new solutions for the, for the end uh, clients, which they could not reach, you know, the, the stores were closed in retail. Hmm? So therefore, they moved forward their IT investments in 2020 and into 2021. So a little surprise to me, but they did so. And on top of that growth, in 2022, they expect to grow 88.9, which is huge, even for Nordics, for European, it's very large in IT investments. And it all goes into new technologies, cloud, and what have you. All the things that we would like to work with for fun to get the new deals which is referable on a global scale. I have, of course, been a little bit nervous together with Shanka, you know, what happens now with the U Ukrainian war, right? <laughs> what happens to our report? What happens to the numbers? What about the predictions? I've seen the latest numbers coming in, and yes, the industries are reporting, you know, reduced sales, problems with order supply. Yes, they're reducing their targets. But they're not reducing their investments. Not at all. On the contrary, they're keeping their investment targets. They are continuing to hire people because they will not end up in a situation where they're not having the right people, where they're not sitting with the right investments. So 4,500 FTEs they are missing and they are asking for these technologies normal systems development, and all the techno new technologies which they are asking for. This creates major opportunities uh, as the service offerings. Managed services are increasing in Denmark, perhaps a little faster than the other Nordic countries, uh, statistics shows, the latest service. So still a very interesting uh, area for, for many of you. What type of country is Denmark really? Are we talking about Silicon Valley, also supported by investment as a middle column? Or are we more a, do we really put it into action type of country on, on the right side? This is a model from the big heads of IMD. They issue such a report on a global scale every year where they rank countries. Denmark has scored right on all parameters. The four Nordic countries are in lead on, on all uh, four here, scores very well. They are in the lead. But what I would like you to remember here is that Denmark is exceptional as no, number one globally on the one out to the right. It's so only US who's sticking a little ahead of us. You can read more about it in the report. Denmark is known to be executing. Denmark is a fast moving country in implementing, agreeing, making deals, and so on and so forth. Here's an example, right? How to implement 5G, which is so important for many of the business cases in the working with uh, industrial IoT, uh, making supply chain work, all the smart things to be. Nobody was ready in 2020. Denmark was ready in 2021. Denmark has rolled out all of the country in 2021. It took us less, less than a year. None of the other Nordic countries were ready when rolled out in 2021. 
right? It means a lot to your business cases when you come into Denmark. Here are other business cases. We'll just skip it quickly. Far ahead on AI, somewhat ahead on big data. The Nordics is ahead on cloud, which means a lot. This is a never ending story on, on cloud, but we are well ahead of the rest of EU in uh, rolling this out. Perhaps you already know, as well as here in India, that quantum computing is the future. Work a lot with that. Do come to Denmark with your investments and your partnership on this element here. It will mean a lot to the various sectors that I mentioned. In the report, you will find this template here for both larger and not so big Indian companies. It's a full template. But also, again, very clearly, referenceable deals. And there's also investment possibilities, which you, for example, would see on the, the cloud or the fintech area. Please do discuss this internally with your company, or even better, discuss it with me, invest in Denmark indeed, so we, we, we can have a discussion which will bring you, your investments even sharper. Take your big thinking hat on when you, when you come into these markets. It's very mature. But there's also many experiences which can forward you and make you not waste more time, not waste money in your business development. Build your local presence and brand awareness. When you go into markets, stay there, right? Denmark builds on relationships and brand awareness. And this is a problem which I've interviewed many of your peers into the report. The clients cannot separate you, right? You have fantastic brands and I more or less can do it, you know, separate one of the Indian companies from, us, from, from each other but the clients have severe difficulties. So there's a brand building problem with the Indian companies. Right? You can do so much, so can your neighbor. And it goes a little into uh, to the last point on, on, on the bottom here. Don't use the big horn of everything you can do. Don't show your capabilities, the client don't care. Strong statement from the more or less quoting from the clients, several of them. Don't show us all your capabilities, we know that. You need, we need to have a balanced dialogue between client and companies on how you can help me, how you can help us as a client. It's much easier for the small companies which can do just some, one small, uh, smart thing, much easier. The bigger companies have bigger problems here. Then I would like to talk much more about the, the cultural thing, but the time is running up. So here's the pilot. This is Invest in Denmark, who's guiding you into the uh, waters of, of, of Denmark. Gladly me on board if you like. But here's a full tour around, which you'll see in the report as, as, as well. The green growth, not the green transformation, this is a green growth for Denmark, which we would like you to, to join. The capacity, the, all the digitalization uh, agendas here, uh, which will lead you to good deals in a mature environment, trust-based culture. And then remark that this is just not a, a one-sided type of, of, of country. There's many sectors here which you can benefit from. Invest in trust, invest in Denmark.